Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, and welcome to a Spider Strategies monthly educational webinar. This month of September 2018, we'll be covering using Connect with relational databases and SOAP data sources to update scorecards in Scoreboard. My name is Tom Keating. I'm the Training and Customer Experience Consultant at Spider Strategies. And I always invite and welcome anyone to contact me directly at tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com. Today's agenda will start with a brief review of the scoreboard architecture and some connect basics. Then we'll move on to creating new data source connections in connect to, in today's purposes, of relational database and a SOAP web services data source both of which need to exist and be accessible independent of Connect. Lastly, we'll cover using new data source connections to update existing scoreboard scorecards via Connect. What you see before you now is a pictorial overview of the scoreboard architecture. There's a lot on the screen in front of you. I'll give you just a minute to peruse it and take it all in. And then I'd like to focus your attention on the heart of the matter, which is the scoreboard Java web application, which is of course accessed via modern day web browsers such as Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, and so on. And also, regarding today, the Connect import utility for data integration. Last month in August of 2018, we did a Connect, we'll call it a Connect 101 web education, uh, where we focused on Excel based external data sources, which we employed to both build and populate scorecards within Scoreboard. If by chance you have not seen them or missed that presentation, it's constantly available to you at our website at kpi dashboards.com and the Learn page. On the Learn page, there's a uh, drop down to what category of information you're looking for. If you go to Recorded Webinars, you'll see a couple uh, ex existing webinars from July and August. And the Connect Building Scorecards and Updating KPIs webinar is available at this location. Today, what we'll be focusing on is a couple new data sources, external data sources, that we can leverage through Connect to get data into your scoreboard scorecards. The first will be a MySQL database, and the second is a SOAP web services data source. Before we get into those, just please be aware that there are other data sources that are, of course, accessible via our Connect utility. Examples are Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, and other relational JDBC, JDBC data sources. <laughs> Um, for those of you on this uh, webinar who might be brand potentially brand new to Connect, I just wanted to briefly review the homepage of Connect with you and share with you that it's just really wonderfully simple. There are two primary areas. There's an imports area and there's a data sources area. In this case, I'm showing you a pristine or really empty Connect homepage. But you, of course, can create new imports and you, of course, can create new data sources. We will be doing both today on our webinar. Again, if you are unfamiliar with Connect, once you're creating an import process in Connect, it's a very simple left-to-right five-step process. You begin by providing some basic information about a name, what type of import you're aspiring to create, and so on. Then you uh, connect to your data source and do some labeling and identifying of where import data should be going in terms of columns. Third, you identify the destination within existing scorecards and or uh, perspectives, objectives, and KPIs within scoreboard. Next, you move to the mapping to make sure that everything is mapped accordingly and appropriately. And lastly, scheduling if and when desired to schedule an import process with any sense of frequency or regularity. 
Now that we've uh, completed that brief review of scoreboard architecture and Connect Basics, let's move on to discussing creating new data source connections in Connect. Again, today we'll be discussing a relational database connection and a SOAP web services connection, which both need to exist and be accessible independent of our Connect utility. To preview what you'll see when you set up a data source connection to a MySQL or other relational database resources. Just wanted to give you a quick screen capture of the data source connection interface. You'll see the opportunity to provide a description in which you effectively just give the data source a name. Then you need to provide a host or IP address, a port number, a valid username, a valid password, which you'll provide twice, and give it the appropriate database name. That's all pertaining to a MySQL or relational database data source connection in Connect. In our case today, we're going to be using a publicly accessible uh, MySQL database. This is something that, of course, I'll be using today for this webinar, but I want you to know that this is also available to you, our customers and our partners, to use within the mobile world practice or playground environment that you have at your disposal. In terms of the description, you can name it whatever you want to call it. The host is the data source .balance scorecards.com. The port is 53306. Username is Spidero. The password, I won't read it at you, but there it is. And the database name is Spider Data Source. With regard to a SOAP web services data source, Again, the information that our Connect utility requires, again, is a description or a name, a URL, and a Web Services Description Language, or WSDL URL. Again, the same data is available to you via a SOAP Web Services data source. Again, the description can be whatever you want to name that data source if you choose to play with this within the mobile world environment, within your uh, uh, scoreboard environment. The URL is presented, and the WSDL URL is also available to you here. If you need any information about either of these resources, please feel free to contact me personally at any time. Before we move on to the actual demonstration of creating new data sources, Let's also discuss that we'll use those new data source connections to update existing scoreboard scorecards via our Connect utility. With that said, let's jump into scoreboard and review the nature of where we're going to go with this demonstration. I've logged into scoreboard and have landed at the home page. I'll navigate to the scorecards section of scoreboard. Within our scorecards area, we have our sample Mobile World Inc. environment, which is comprised of a corporate Tier 1 level based around a fairly classic balanced scorecard methodology, financial, customer, internal processes, and organizational capacity, but also has underlying departmental organizations and scorecards. I'll focus your attention on the marketing organization and its marketing scorecard, which is wonderfully simple in nature, where it's comprised of two different objectives. First, to improve brand awareness, and secondly, to increase lead generation. Supporting each of those objectives are some KPIs, including Google search position, article mentions, Twitter mentions, and Facebook likes. As you see in this case, in this mobile world scorecard and the marketing department scorecard, you see that it is completely populated through many, many, many months, even years of data and information showing us performance and overall scores at the various levels. For the training purposes today, I've created a couple of additional copies of that marketing organization and the underlying scorecard. The first is a September 25 empty marketing scorecard for the MySQL 
update. You'll see here that the marketing scorecard is in the exact same structure as what we just saw, but it is devoid of any data or actual values for any time period. So everything is effectively grayed out and empty of actual values. Similarly, we have a September 25 empty marketing for SOAP web services update organization and a marketing scorecard again with the same objectives and the same underlying KPIs which again is similarly empty. Our goal today is of course to create a couple new data sources and then leverage those data sources to populate our two organizations and their scorecards for those marketing objectives and measures. Having quote unquote set the table with that understanding of what we'll do over the next several minutes through our demonstration, let's jump over to Spider Strategies Connect. Just to remind you very quickly that the Spider Strategies Connect utility is available by simply providing forward slash connect at the end of your Spider Strategies scoreboard URL. You'll need to authenticate or log in with a valid username and password, and then you'll be brought to the Connect homepage, which you should find to be similar to what you're viewing right now. In our case, our first step is to create a new data source. I'll click on Create New Data Source under the Data Sources area of Connect. The data source type that we'll create is going to be a MySQL data source, but please just take note that DB2, Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, SOAP Web Services, and FTP Server Directory are all available to you. We'll click on MySQL and select Next. The description that we'll provide today will be very simple. Today is Tuesday, September 25th, so we'll call this the Tuesday Source. Just keeping it very simple and brief. We'll move on to the host IP address which again is coming directly from the inf information that I previously provided to you about the publicly accessible uh, MySQL database or data source available to use within your mobile world playground environment. The port that we need is 53306. The username, as you may or may not recall, was Spidero. The password is something that I am going to need to briefly uh, copy and paste uh, because it's a little bit long for me to remember. So bear with me as I do a quick copy of the password and paste it in there. And then again, paste it into the retype password field as well. And the database name is Spider Data Source. After providing all the required information to set up this data source, I'll click OK. And you see that we now have a Tuesday source data source available to us. Let's go ahead and create an import from that Tuesday source. We'll click in the upper left corner under Imports on the Create New Import button and be presented with the five steps of creating a Connect import process. We'll start with basic information, give this a name, and we'll again call this Tuesday, whoop, Tuesday Import Example. The data source that we'll employ will be the Tuesday source that we just created a minute ago, and the import type will be to update metric values. I'll click OK in the upper right corner to move on to the second step of the setup process. We'll click on the source data button. Here we need to provide a valid query against that underlying MySQL database. In this case, I will again do a little bit of copying and pasting from a document behind the scenes that gives me a very simplistic select star from social sentiment query statement. I'll paste that into the query field. Please be aware before I move on that we fully understand that your actual real world queries against an underlying relational database will and probably could and should be more complex than this. But this is a great example for us to use for our training purposes today and for your playground environment should you choose to play 
with this data source against your mobile world environment. At that point, we'll run the query and review the data set result of running that query against our MySQL database. If I just simply scroll down the results on the right, you see that we have item types of Facebook, Google search, Twitter, and article mentions, each of which have distinct monthly dates associated with them and distinct values for the different months between July and December of 2017. Please take note that these columns are presently unlabeled, so we need to help the import process to understand how it should interpret this result set from our query against the database. We will drag the metric ID and name label on top of the item type column. We'll drag the date label on top of the date column. And of course, we'll drag the value label to the top of the value column. In certain cases, you may need to address things like date formats or what you want to do with negative values or missing values. But in our case, we're ready to go and can simply click OK towards the upper right corner. That completes step two of the process. Let's move on to the step three, which is the destination metrics. Here is where we're pointing this import to which organization and scorecard and potentially perspective and objective and even measures we want to, to direct the import towards. In our case, it'll be our September 25 empty marketing for MySQL update organization on the left. On the right, we have that marketing scorecard that we reviewed earlier and I can see the improved brand awareness objective as well as the underlying measures. In this case, I clicked on the entire marketing scorecard and that will be fine even though we really only have values to fill in the improved brand awareness objective. We'll go ahead and click OK at this point and we'll move on to the mapping step of the definition of this uh, connect import process. You see that the elements, the data elements that our query result set provide have been automatically uh, mapped appropriately to the destination names and organizations. If by any chance something like article mentions wasn't automatically mapped and may sit over on the left under the source data and you need to manually do the mapping, it's a simple drag and drop process to align an incoming data element with a scorecard uh, destination. At this point, I'll go ahead and click OK. And lastly, we can move to the schedule step of the process. Um, back in August, we talked about uh, when you're importing Excel import files, that scheduling really isn't overly appropriate or necessary. But when you're doing queries, against relational databases and expect to do it with any kind of a frequency in the, in the aspiration of updating your scoreboard scorecards, scheduling might be quite helpful in terms of automating the process. So we'll click on Schedule. I'll select the New Schedule button. And let's just imagine that at every single month on the last day of the month, the MySQL database is updated with new information that we want to bring into our scoreboard scorecards. In that case, we would want to select the frequency of monthly, and maybe we want to run our process on you know, the second day of the new month, and we want it to run during the middle of the night so as not to create any kind of server traffic during the middle of the business day. So we'll run it at 2 o'clock a.m., and again, let's imagine that our company resides in uh, Phoenix, Arizona in America. So I'll select America slash Phoenix. So we've provided a schedule for this overall import process through Connect. We've completed all five steps of the uh, import process setup, and I can click Save in the upper right-hand corner. We see now that the Tuesday import example exists its status is unknown because it's never been attempted to be run. Uh, and we're certainly not going to sit around and wait for the second day of the new month. So let's just go ahead and manually run that import right now. Under Actions, I'll select Run Now. 
that import process will run. We get the result under, under the status column of success. So yay and hooray, that import has occurred. Let's go take a look at the result. I'll jump back over into Spider Strategy scoreboard. We'll navigate to the scorecard for the September 25 empty marketing for my SQL update, which we just employed. I'll select it. And if we go to the marketing scorecard, you can even immediately see on the right that we now have some data populating the six months between July and December of 2017. If I use the calendar selector uh, period selector in the upper right to navigate ahead into any of those months between July and December of 2017, I see that the marketing scorecard is populated with a score. The improved brand awareness objective is similarly populated with a score for the various months. And of course, the underlying KPIs of Google search position, article mentions, Twitter mentions, and Facebook likes are of course populated with data that we pulled from the underlying MySQL database and brought in to this scorecard via Connect. Having completed that process, let's jump back into Connect and talk about creating another new data source, which is from a SOAP Web Services data source. I'll click Create New Data Source and identify the data source type as a SOAP Web Service. Uh, for anyone who might happen not to know, SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. And it is basically, it uses XML format to relay data and information. In this case, we'll give it a description of Tuesday SOAP, whoops, SOAP uh, data source. We'll give it a URL, which again comes from the information I showed you earlier and again is available on a document that I'd be happy to provide to you. But if we have a URL ready to go, which is our social sentiment URL pointing to our data source.balancedscorecards.com database. We also have a USDL URL, which again similarly points to the social sentiment.wsdl resource. And we'll click OK. Again, if you review the data source area of the Connect homepage, you'll see that we now have the existence of a Tuesday SOAP data source uh, available to us. Let's now create an import process against that new SOAP data source. We'll click the Create New Import button and again step through the five steps of the uh, Create or Edit Import within Connect. The first is basic information. And again, we'll just call this the, whoops, I have my caps lock on apparently. We'll call this the Tuesday import example. Uh, well, let's call it for soap. And its data source is going to be the Tuesday soap data source that we just created a minute ago. And again, the import type is to update metric values within a scorecard in scoreboard. We'll click OK and move on to step two, the source data. This is going to be different than what we just saw when working with a relational database. In this case, the key is to provide an, an appropriate SOAP body syntax that will allow us to use XML code to again connect to underlying databases and data resources. I will again leverage my handy dandy document back here to be able to appropriately provide the right syntax to get so a social sentiment request. I'll paste that in and then move to the SOAP response uh, horizontal tab towards the bottom of this page. Or actually, we'll send the SOAP request to the remote server first. And then let's look at the SOAP response and see that we have a full-fledged SOAP response from the server. Next thing that we want to do is filter the elements for the data set that we desire for our uh, present 
updating purposes for our marketing scorecard within Scoreboard. I'll click the Filter Element for Data Set button, and I'll provide a data element path of slash slash social sentiment item. I'll then click on the data set and realize that no data was returned. The reason for that is that I neglected to do any mapping yet of what it should pull from that filter data set and align it with connects requirement of effectively a unique ID or name, a date, and a value. So in this case, for the ID, we want to set it up to be the item type. For the value, we want it to be value. And for the date, of course, date. At this point, if I click on the data set, I will return a valid data set. You'll see under the metric ID name, value, and date columns, we have information. And you'll see the same information that we just pulled earlier from our MySQL database with Facebook information, Google search, Twitter, and article mention values for distinct months. However, you'll note that under the date column, the date is all set up for September 27th, because to be honest, I'm recording this demo on uh, September 27th. Um, so I need to change the date format f to be consistent with the date format that's coming from our SOAP Web Services XML request. In this request, we see that it is set to be year dash month dash day. So with that knowledge in hand, I'll return to the data set and change the date format to be year dash month dash date. Once that is set, you see that the result set at the bottom here underneath does uh, appropriately identify that we have different values for different distinct months, but again between July and December for 2017 for our Facebook likes, our Google search results, our Twitter, and our article mentions. So we've set up that step of the process appropriately and can click OK. Next, we'll move to the destination metric step of the process. We'll open up the Mobile World Inc. organization, find our September 25 Empty Marketing for SOAP Web Services Update organization, and the Marketing Scorecard on the right, and the Improve Brand Awareness Objective area in here. And again, reflect that we've got Google search position, article mentions, Twitter mentions, and Facebook likes. And that should be the destination of our import process. Having identified those, I'll click OK in the upper right corner and move on to mapping. Again, the mapping magic has wonderfully done its job. Again, Connect has really a lot of intelligence in terms of text ana uh, analysis and being able to map incoming data to appropriate uh, scorecard, uh, perspective, objective, and even KPI level uh, destinations. So there's really no work that we need to do here. Again, if by chance something did not get mapped, you again just might need to do a little bit of dragging and dropping to place you know, something that's coming from the left to the appropriate location on the right. You just got to get it to be green. And then click OK. Lastly, again, we could schedule this import process in the exact same way that we did by setting up a new schedule. Again, we'll stick with the same paradigm that maybe these values from the SOAP web services data source are updated on a monthly basis and we'd like to import them into our scorecard uh, score our scoreboard scorecard on again let's say in this case the third day of a new month and we'll do this at three o'clock in the morning and let's have it again occur in Phoenix in America and we'll click OK again that new process through connect is set up in the upper right hand corner we can click save we see it existing here as a soap web services 
import process. Uh, again, we'll run it manually by clicking run now towards the right. Allow it to do that process. It immediately gives us a successful result. And again, to uh, reap the rewards of our efforts, we'll jump back into Spider Strategy Scoreboard, access the September 25 Empty Marketing for SOAP Web Services Update Organization, and the Marketing Scorecard, which we saw earlier that was empty, is now populated. If I navigate back through time here, or I guess we'll go forward through time and see that we now have data between July and December of 2017 at all the levels all the way down to our Facebook likes, Twitter mentions, article mentions, Google search position, improved brand awareness objective, and of course the overall marketing scorecard. So we have successfully created some data sources and uh, connected to them and imported data from a SQL my, a MySQL data source and a, a SOAP web services. Let's just review what we've done. And please, I would ask you to join us again next month in October for our next live free training webinar, which will cover using templates and value rollups in scoreboard thank you very much for attending today please feel free to contact me personally at any time again i'm tom keating your training and customer experience consultant at spider strategies my email address is tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com and you can also contact our education department at learn at spiderstrategies.com again thank you for attending and please have a great day